I think it's time to discuss the black versus Asian racial tension, not only seen in real life, but also seen in the media and entertainment. I don't know how it is in China, but in America, for girls kicking your ass, you do not have to be a gentleman. <laughs> Chinese food, no soul food here. I didn't say nothing about no soul food. Me to speak in broken English, bitchling bitch, the fuck? Out of here, man. If it wasn't for Tony, What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. I'm back with another video. And this is a piggyback off of my last video and of a community post I made because I'm realizing, growing up, I have my own experiences, I have my own memories. And even in the media, on social media, throughout entertainment over the last 30 plus, 40, 50 plus years, there has always been this racial tension that's prolonged and exaggerated and that's really there between black and asian people this is going to be an open discussion an open conversation you know where people can give their thoughts on the matter your own examples your own observations of this black versus asian conflict racial conflict because i know i'm not the only one that see it you know a lot of people like to ignore it i don't see race i don't see race but obviously it's a big issue if you have thoughts if you have articles if you have suggestions on like different things people should read about or link them down below and don't be condescending because in my last video a lot of people have this attitude of like oh you need to do your research or you need to do this you need to do that it's just like first of all hold up hold up hold up wait oh my god hold up like i said this is just an open discussion and i want to get into different topics regarding this situation especially some i've seen on social media and just to give y'all a visual of it all, I'm gonna actually include tweets, recent tweets from this year. You know, it's January as I'm recording this video. I looked on Twitter, I seen recent commentary, recent discourse on this black versus Asian conflict. And I'm just like, wow, I didn't have to look far. Because I kid y'all not, right before I did this video, I came across this tweet from the New York Post saying, Asian parents claim NY STEM program discriminates against their kids in favor of black Hispanic students. And I was like, wow, you see how relevant this is? You see how people are still talking about this type of thing? But it was the responses from black people that got me thinking, hmm, the first one, go home. This is our country. Hmm. Second one, black Americans, when will we realize these immigrants in our country are at war with us? We better fight back and understand we have no friends because these immigrants can go back to their homelands if they have any issues with any programs that enrich black Americans. Another one, Asian people are just white people light. Another one, they have no problem setting up shop in our neighborhoods to send their kids to college, but as soon as we want the same, it's unfair. I can say personally, from my own experience, as a black man living in New York City, one of the most diverse cities in the world, I've never really had like a personal conflict with an Asian person or an Asian kid, teenager growing up. You know, it's never really been a situation where I can think back and be like, oh yeah, let me tell this story. But I have other stories of things happening to people that I know. Now, through my own research, in some aspects, there has been solidarity between black and Asian people throughout history, especially I'm talking about in American history, right? But along the way, especially in the 80s and the 90s, the tension between black and Asian people began to rise and become exacerbated. One of the major cases I wanna talk about is the killing and the death of Latasha Harlins, which happened in 1991 South Central Los Angeles. And in this situation, it was a teenage black girl that went into a Korean owned convenience store. I think it was morning, she was going to school, she got a thing of orange juice, but she had put the orange juice in her bag before she went to pay for it. Footage shows that she had money in her hand, but you know how some people, they take, they don't just bring it to the counter, they take it with the intentions of paying for it, but because of, you know, a stereotype of, oh, this girl gonna come in here still, right? The store owner, which was a Korean woman, 
she assumed that she was going to steal and they had like a little fight. Eventually, things got out of hand. Latasha went to turn away and the Korean store owner shot her in the back of the head, instantly killing her. This footage is on YouTube, but of course, I'm not going to show it because we know how that is. To make things worse, the husband and the son was outside the store when this happened. They heard the gunshot. They came running in. The husband called the police and reported it as a stick up. Like it was some type of self-defense. When in the video footage, you see Latasha walking away and the lady just shoots him in the back of the head. Not like she jumped over the register and they was fighting. She walked away and she still shot her in the back of the head. This was a major thing that contributed to the 1992 Los Angeles riots where it was a big uproar and Koreatown and that shop was a specific target. And 13 days before that, the videotape beating of Rodney King, where you know, all these white cops were beating Rodney King, had went viral. Back then in the days, going viral was when it was all over the news. Everybody saw it all over the newspapers. So that just tied in this conflict of like the racism, the hatred against black people. And that incident with Latasha Harlins was a major thing that kept perpetuating the black versus Asian conflict. And that's why years later, when it comes to entertainment, you got humor like this. Hurry up and buy! That's where you get this idea, you get this conflict or this issue a lot of people have where like they say a lot of Asian people come to America, they start businesses in predominantly black urban neighborhoods. Like y'all want the money from black people, but then you have a problem with them shopping or when they come in, you watching them or you think they're gonna steal. This is like, y'all know y'all have the shop in a black neighborhood, right? Hurry up and buy. That's what a lot of people think about. That's what a lot of people thought about. And that's still an ongoing issue. To top it off, let's get into this tweet from The Hollywood Reporter, which talked about the Little Mermaid tanks in both China and South Korea amid a racist backlash over the casting of Halle Bailey in the role of Ariel. Where we all know, last summer there was this backlash because the Little Mermaid is supposed to be white with red hair. And they had a black girl with you know, red dreadlocks playing a role. And it was like, oh, Disney's so woke, this and that. And they tried to say it was tanking, it was failing, it was flopping in China and South Korea because of this. And some of the responses, if black people boycotted Chinese businesses here in the States, those businesses would crumble and go bankrupt. The black dollar in America is China's greatest asset in this country. And I'm like, wow. You see how some people think? Another tweet. The Little Mermaid is tanking in both China and South Korea. Meanwhile, K-pop is appropriating black culture by basically being Asian R&B. And let's take a look at a Chinese Little Mermaid poster. You see, they have her looking like an avatar. She looks blue. You can't even tell what race she is because for Disney, they are trying to promote it in China. Like, we don't want you to see she's black because we know it might not do well in there. It's just crazy. But before I get more into that, I want to tell you about an article I came across when I was like looking up different things with this conflict. And it's an article called The Black Asian Conflict is a Problematic Trope and it's Time to End It. And this was written by columnist Jeff Yang in a 2021 Medium article under the hashtag for Stop Asian Hate. And a section that I took out that I want to emphasize is when he said, there's an active effort being made to direct Asian American anger at the black community and is rooted in white establishment anxiety over emerging coalitions among the rising black and brown majority of the United States. The concern is merited. There's a long and deep history of mutualism between the black and Asian communities that extends into the early years of America's history through the civil rights era and into our present day. And it's a compelling counterweight to the reoccurring trope of black Asian conflict, one that directly threatens white supremacy. So what do y'all think about that? And this is from an Asian author. You know, he's the one that wrote this and a lot of, you have a lot of different opinions, a lot of different perspectives. 
because I've seen a lot of Asian people, even on YouTube, say that they feel targeted by black people, black people this, black people that, and you know, it's an unspoken thing where black people can target them, but they get away with it because they're black and because of all the oppression that black people have to go through. It's kind of like, hmm. Wait a minute, hold on. And then recently, what did I do my last video on? The Proud Family episode where they had the main protagonist say this. You can take your model minority myth somewhere else. Black people can't be racist. I agree. Racism is prejudice plus power. Um, and you know, the Proud Family reboot is a cartoon on Disney Plus where a large demographic of it is kids plus the people that grew up watching the show. But you see how this is being intertwined even in the media now? Basically, what I got from that article was that there's been this push to exaggerate the black versus Asian conflict because, you know, it's a better look for minorities to be attacking each other than for them to be attacking the effects of white supremacy. From back then, and even what trickled into today's time period. So in the media, when you see like a black man attacking an Asian lady, talking about, oh, you brought COVID over here, that's gonna get pushed and this and that. And that's gonna go viral versus other conflicts where it shows that people can just be assholes in general. But that one video with a black versus Asian racial conflict, that's gonna get blown up. And it's like, oh, see, black and Asian people really do hate each other. And it's just like, mm. Oh my God. Because you wanna know something? I can even think back throughout my time in like middle school, high school, where, you know, I went to school where a lot of other black kids, Asian kids, it was like maybe a two, three percent type thing that I had in my class. But I've heard a lot of offensive jokes against Asian people about like, you know, making fun of their accent or, you know, they see an Asian lady, she's given the name Meng Lee, like, you know, that type of thing or, you know, Pork fried rice, long nail, short nail, that type of thing, or the whole idea that a lot of Asian people eat cats and dogs. Like, I'm telling you. Oh my God, hold up. I know I'm not the only one that has heard these type of stereotypes and like things against Asian people coming from the black community. But then I also have another story of back when I was in ninth grade, I remember they had a trip for us to go to China and I was one of the few selected students because I did so well. And it was this whole thing where they wanted to take us to different countries at the end of the school year. Long story short, something happened where I couldn't get my passport in time, so I couldn't go. But one of my friends that went told me that one of my teachers, I remember she was an English teacher. She was a black lady. And she used to wear her hair in an afro. Like Michael Jackson, Jackson 5 style. She told me that it was one place they visited in China where a lot of people were coming up to her, you know, my black teacher with the afro. She told me that a lot of people were coming up to my teacher, like pulling out her hair, wanting to take pictures with her. Then, to top it off, she told me that she even heard people making monkey noises at her, like, ah, ooh, ah. and that just made my teacher uncomfortable and she was just ready to go home after that. And this was only the second day out of the five days they were scheduled to be there. So I remember she told me that I was like, Oh my, oh my, oh my God. So that's another thing where I've seen, I've looked at stories, I've heard people talk about their own experiences. Like when you go to certain parts of Asia, you know, whether it's China, Korea, Hong Kong, Vietnam, Thailand, you go to certain parts in Asia, right? As a black person, sometimes you can be looked at as like some type of celebrity because they're not used to seeing you or people want to come up, take pictures with you. You're seen as such a rarity over there. But then other times you'll have it to where you feel like an outcast and you feel like a lot of people are like mocking you, making fun of you, pulling at your hair, making monkey noises. So I don't know. Where do y'all stand with this? Could somebody please make it make sense? But then, you know, I also think about the times where black and Asian people were shown that they can get along and they can even be love interests. Think about Cinderella in the late 90s. They had Brandy, R&B superstar Brandy as Cinderella and the prince was an Asian man. 
And of course, back then, there was no social media to track how much outrage there was. But when Cinderella premiered on TV, it broke record numbers. I think, if I remember, like over 50 million people tuned in to watch it, and it was a big success. Then a few years later, you had Romeo Must Die with R&B superstar Aaliyah and Jet Li. Watch out. Romeo Must Die was like one of his first major crossover films in America. And Aaliyah was his supposed love interest. The thing with that is that at the end, if you didn't dig deep into it, you realize at the end they had Aaliyah and Jet Li kiss. But that didn't test well when they showed it to test screen audiences. So instead, they had them hug in the final edit. And it was just like, hmm. There's another thing where like Jet Li did look a little older than Aaliyah and it was to some people like a mismatch and that's why I came across like a little awkward to see them kiss because throughout the movie they had some type of friendship but there was nothing romantic that they showed with their characters but regardless those were some major things where it's like oh black and Asian people can be love interests together then even a year or two later, the Prowl family had an episode where Penny had a love interest and in an Asian boy in her class. And I can think about another Disney series, Jake Long and the American Dragon, which was one of my favorite shows growing up. One of his best friends in the show was a black girl. So there has been a thing where it's like sometimes they just characters, it shouldn't matter that, oh, this one is black, that one is Asian. But that really happens. So every time it does happen, a lot of people are quick to point it out. But then let's talk about other forms of entertainment. Like I showed y'all earlier with the Hurry Up and Bye. You had movie series like Rush Hour. All the way from here to China, or Japan, wherever the hell you from and all up that great wall. They had that buddy cop comedy feel, Chris Tucker, Jackie Chan. Even though that was a successful series, all three movies all together made almost a billion dollars. A lot of people say that Rush Hour would not fly in today's social climate because of the racial jokes in the movie. And when you look it up, African Americans were stereotyped over 35 times throughout the three movies, while Asian people were stereotyped over 61 times throughout the three movies. So it's kind of like, you have these movies, you have these forms of entertainment where you have black and Asian people as the leads, but they won't let the movie or the TV show go without some type of stereotype against the Asian or black person. That's just a given. You can't just have black and Asian characters be friends or be, you know, love interests most of the time. There always has to be a callback to a stereotype about either of their race. Now let's get into the talk about cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation because I can tell you another thing where you'll see this black versus Asian conflict is there could be appreciation for cultures for you know different Asian cultures and then you see that a lot of Asian people have appreciation for black culture and black music and different things like that right but sometimes it spills over into like oh they hate us, but they want our culture. I've seen this sentiment many times, especially when it comes to like K-pop, you know, Korean pop, and a lot of people talk about how they borrow from black culture, black dancing, black, you know, nuances. It is basically like Asian R&B, but then you have a lot of the fans, the K-pop fans, which is a huge craze in itself, where they favor Korean people or Korean pop artists performing and dancing in certain ways Whereas a black person, they'll shun them for it. Whereas like the influence for this K-pop dancing and singing in production came from black artists. That's a conversation I'm seeing many times. Following a similar pattern, I came across another tweet which said, blacks will try and bully Asians for dancing or cooking or wearing certain hairstyles, but still go to their carryouts, talking about the American Chinese restaurants, still go to the beauty salons, still buy hair from them and give them generational wealth, LOL. I came across another tweet where it was this Asian girl with what people considered a black girl aesthetic with the braids, long eyelashes and long nails. And the original tweet said, there's no way people think this much makeup is attractive. 
someone quote tweeted it, which went viral, saying, y'all be telling all your biases when y'all defend this BS. A Japanese woman with a darker tan, long acrylics, braids, and jumbo lashes, she's trying to be ugly, rebel. Okay, so you admit she's using misogynoir and blackface to rebel and be ugly in conservative, anti-black Japan. People call me near my reach. People can call him Mario Matibe. Another aspect of this is recently this Asian girl went viral because she was talking in an accent, like this type of country, like down south accent. And a lot of people was like, do you really talk like that? Or are you doing this because you know it's going to get you a lot of attention on TikTok? You know, TikTok, biggest social media platform in the world. Last year, they said that people use TikTok more than they use Google to look up stuff. But yeah, like I was saying, this Asian girl was talking in this type of like down south accent like that. And a lot of people was uh Wait a minute, hold on. The woman who went viral for having a questionable Georgia accent a few weeks back has now been exposed because in a video from 2021, she was heard speaking in a different type of accent. I grew up in Georgia for a decade and then I f moved to Nebraska and over there, by the way. Do you, you want me to speak in broken English, bitch, link, bitch, the fuck? Out of here, man. But in a video from just three years back in 2021, she was seen speaking in a whole different accent. Hello guys, welcome back. And if you don't know me, I go by Trey, and today I will be getting my LASIK eye surgery, so I'm really excited. See, my cat wanted to join me, but I found it interesting how she just jumped into that accent of the broken English. What all people were saying is, is this country accent the real you, or are you putting on this front for TikTok? And when you look back at her video from two, three years ago, she wasn't even talking like that at all. So you see, this has been a lot of racial tension between black and Asian people. And then y'all see those tweets. Y'all see how people still think. And this is 2024. And in, in real life, you can't generalize people, but a lot of people have the mentality of one think like that, they all think like that when it comes to like different races. And that's just the reality of how things are now. But I'm pretty sure most of us, you know, I can say in my day-to-day -day life, when I go out into the world, out in public, interact with people, you know, I have, I had, and I still have many different jobs that deal with the public. I don't feel no type of way when I come across Asian people. Sometimes it's just what it is. It's like, it shouldn't even matter what race you are. But obviously to some people, it still matters. But I remember as a little kid, you don't think, oh, I have an Asian friend or I don't know, if they were thinking, oh, I have a black friend. You just have a friend. But as you get older, you get introduced to the different nuances, the different histories, the different this, the different that. And you learn about history and social, racial conflicts. People's mindsets and perspectives start to change. And to be honest, all the different examples and all the different tweets and all the different forms of media I talked about haven't even begun to scratch the surface of the tension between black and Asian people, but it's a part of the conversation that I want to have. And I really want to know your thoughts down below. Where do y'all stand when it comes to the black versus Asian racial tension, the racial conflict throughout history that's seen now? You know, you saw those tweets, you see how people think. Where do y'all stand with it? Do you think this ever gonna be a resolution? Or this is always going to be a reoccurring theme when it comes to race relations in this country and in the world. But anyways, that was just my two cents on the matter. I really want to know your opinions down below. Please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.